Hi, Samantha Riley here from SamanthaRiley.global and I'm joining Prosper on the online prosperity show today and we're talking about how to position yourself to get known so that you can grow your business. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, I've brought you the co-founder of the Global Thought Leaders Network, Samantha Riley. Samantha, how are you doing, my love? I am doing so well. Absolutely. And thank you so much for your time today. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching this part of the show right now, you would understand that we are always bringing you experts in their fields that have a um, tremendous amount of knowledge and experience to help your business become profitable and also enjoyable. Now, Samantha, as I said, is the co-founder of the Global Thought Leaders Network. That happens to be an international uh, business organization. She is a business growth coach, a speaker, a number one best-selling author with nearly 25 years of personal experience in building and growing businesses. Now, if you're a thought leader who is ready to play a bigger game so you can actually make more money and create a life that is filled with freedom, purpose, you're in the right space by watching this video right now. Now, Samantha, I could go on and on about your accolades. Tell us a little bit about how you got started, um, you know, as a global thought leader. Wow. So I actually fell into it, you know, and I think that for anyone that's watching that's been in business for a while, they'll be going, oh, yeah, okay, it's not just me. Like, you know, things just happen over time. And when I was first in business, it was, oh, early 90s. Um, and I was only 20 years old. And at that time, that was um, bricks and mortar business. I started off in retail. I owned a dance studio uh, and did that for 18 years. So that, that's the kind of business that I knew, traditional business. And then in 2010, I separated from my husband and moved cities and sold my businesses and just completely started life again and started to really embrace a lot of what was going on in, um, in the business world at that time. Because obviously, you know, social media and, and emails and websites had started to come out, you know, in the early 2000s. And it was really starting to become really mainstream. And I noticed that people were connecting more with people. They were really um, doing business with them in a different way. Coaching was on the rise. Um, and I didn't want to get back into a traditional business where I had to put a key in the door every day. And I mean, you know, I had almost... So I was only working about three hours a week, but I still needed to make sure that there was staff putting the key in the door. And I just went, I don't want to do that anymore. I want to travel the world and I want to meet new people. And here's this opportunity that's in my lap where I can start again and uh, do all this stuff that's really exciting me and still does now. Absolutely. Well, that's a remarkable journey right there. But you did mention something that is... Um confusing to a whole lot of people that are probably watching right now you started off in a traditional sense of doing business which is the brick and mortar and now doing the whole online space walk us through that transition because a few people really can't kind of let go of what was and actually embrace what is now um, business on your mobile phone or laptop mm. and it doesn't feel the same absolutely and it isn't and, and there are a lot of people that are really pushing back from it. And uh, my ex-business partner did, and he stayed in that traditional business model. And, and now he's not in it. You know, he, things change. And, and just because you don't want to embrace what's happening doesn't mean that they're going to slow down for you. Um, so for me, I, I love learning new things all the time. And back in 2011, I went to a... Um, it, it was just a one day business workshop uh, run by Dale Beaumont and he was talking about all of these different things. And I was seriously sitting there going, oh, wow, this is so cool. It just blew my mind. You know, I already had an e-commerce site, but that's pretty much as, as much as I was doing. I was on Facebook chatting with my friends. That was about it. And he just opened my eyes to what was happening at that time. And then from there, I started to look what does it look like going into the future? And that is something that's still to this day, like right now is really exciting for me because we're the next 10 years is going to change on the planet, like more than we've ever, ever, ever known. 
And that to me is really exciting. Absolutely. Well, <clears throat> there is quite a lot that is already happening in the AI front and yeah. also in the retail front where, um, you know, self-service in shops with Amazon has already popped up. So a lot of people have to embrace that, especially if they're brick and mortar type. That's right. Um, That's you know, right. Stuff. So now, Samantha, when you made that shift from traditional to online space, and you would acknowledge or indulge me right now that if anyone has a pair of sweatpants, a laptop, and maybe a, a user handle on Twitter, they can actually call themselves an entrepreneur. What then is the distinction um, of you know the modern day entrepreneur to the one that was actually um, a global, I mean, a, a traditional uh, entrepreneur? Yeah, so your traditional business owner, like let's go back to maybe 70s or 80s, that person had to have, you know, they had to be at their place of business. They had to have a sign on the door that, that had their business name, whatever that was. Um, to be able to connect with a CEO that you wanted to connect with on the other side of the world would have been, A, really difficult to, to find out who they were. Once you did find out who they were, uh, it would have taken a phone call that cost you a real lot of money. And third, you probably had to get through the gatekeeper, which was their PA that said, don't ever, you know, put a phone call through to me. Where now we have, we're connected to the whole world. If I want to connect to that same CEO now, I can look him up on LinkedIn and be connected. If he's sitting at his laptop and he's got, you know, LinkedIn open, we could be connected within 20 seconds. And we're, we're engaging in conversation. Um, which opens up a lot of doors of how we can do business. Um, where the modern day entrepreneur has got a lot more opportunities. However, I still find that there's a lot of people that are calling their entre self entrepreneurs. And I, I'm going to stick my flag in the sand here and get shot down in flames, possibly. I feel that there still is a lot of people with their laptops and their sweatpants that actually aren't making any money. And they're not entrepreneurs at all. They're people that are unemployed and sitting at their laptop with a pair of sweatpants on. So, um, you know, in, back in the, in the 80s, it was, it was more difficult to pull that off. You know, you had to be paying your rent. You had to make sure that there was money coming in the door to keep the business operating. Where now it's just so easy that there's a lot of people that can get by without doing really not too much. Does that make sense? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, so, so to tie that up, you're an entrepreneur if you're making money. Okay, great stuff. So these modern day entrepreneur now, there's now too many of them, like you said. Um, how oh, then? I don't think there's too many of them. That's that's certainly not what I was meaning. Be and and that's only going to go on the rise as well because in the next, oh, I can't remember the. I think it's only like 2025. 50 percent of the workforce is going to be self-employed because a lot of the corporations aren't going to be employing consultants anymore. Why do they want to bother paying, you know, work cover and, and, you know, payroll tax and all of this to keep someone on as a permanent employee when they can just bring in a consultant to, to complete a project in a few months. So I don't think there's too many and I think that it will get more. What my distinction there was is that I think there's too many people calling themselves entrepreneurs. So that's the distinction. Right. Now, in a sea of all these sweatpants and laptops, <laughs> how, then, how then can one actually stand out? That's the one thing that you help people with, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So the first thing you need to do is be really clear on your positioning. So where are you positioning yourself in the marketplace? Um, who are the people that you want to work with? What is it that you do? How do you help them achieve the outcomes? Uh, and you and I were having this little conversation before we got on the call, right? Where um, we were saying that it doesn't matter what age you are. If you're 21 and you want to put yourself out there, that's fine. But don't position yourself as someone that's been doing, you know, the absolute top expert in your niche because you're not. You need to go through the learning, the learning phase. That isn't to say that you can't get out there and do it. Not at all. Like everyone has their first day and I totally support everyone. What I don't support is if you've done one day of whatever it is that you do, don't call yourself the absolute expert. So position yourself where you should be. And interestingly enough, a lot of the people that I work with have been doing their, their 
their thing, their technique, their technical, whatever it is, for probably 20 years or more. And funnily enough, most of them would automatically position themselves lower than someone that doesn't know so much about whatever that is. Um, have you heard of the Dunning-Kruger effect? Please explain. So this is where when you learn a little bit about something, you think that you know a lot about something. And, and there's, there's a bit of a curve that the more you know about something, the more you realise there that you don't know. So um, I love to work with people that are, are true experts, true, you know, they're, they're, they've been specialists, they've really done the work, they're now experts and help them to position themselves where they should be positioned and really extract the IP from their head and get out there and, um, and, and uh, really put themselves out there. Yeah, because the person that's known is the, the person that gets the business, right? If you're one-on-one -on -one clients behind a closed door working out of a shoebox at a desk, your one-on-one -on -one clients know you, but no one else. So, you know, you need to sort of get out there so that more people know you. So the first stage is positioning. And the second stage is building a profile. So that's about getting out there and having people know who you are. Um, and this is when authenticity comes into play. And that was something else that we had a bit of a laugh about before the call, um, because I know authenticity is a buzzword, but it's about really being true to yourself. Who are you? What makes you quirky? What makes you unique? What are your values? Um, and then interweaving that with what you know, so that your content is very full of flavor for who you are. You know, if I tried to speak like you, Prosper, it would come across like there's something wrong, but people might not be able to put their finger on it, if that makes sense. And if you were trying to talk at a million miles an hour like me, people would be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> What are you on? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Which is what people ask me all the time, right? <laughs> yeah. So it's so your positioning, your profile, and then the third piece to getting out there and getting known, of course, is exposure. So it, it's um, it's your partnerships. How can you leverage that your network and do partnerships so that you can reach into new networks? Um, it's about media opportunities, whether it's opportunities, you know, like this, like um, expert series or podcasts or mainstream media or speaking on stage at conferences. Um, and the third piece of that is, and I believe this is a really important piece right now, is becoming a published author. So really putting your stamp on the ground and going, this is my take on what I'm doing. I'm not just an accountant. This is what I believe. This is my specialist area. It's, it's you know, lowering or minimizing tax for small business owners and really being known for that thing. Um, and, you know, we call it being a thought leader, but what is it that you do that makes you stand out from everyone else? Absolutely. There's quite a lot uh, to take in there. So once somebody has positioned themselves and they've created some sort of a profile that people can relate back to, and they now put themselves out there, um, you know, through the exposure. And I'm supposing here you're using uh, the social media or whatever media yeah. they might utilize like this you've just mentioned, and then also uh, publishing a book. Um, which, you know, people can then refer to and, you know, uh, then mention that this person is a thought leader. So would you say that once you have the expertise, you still really need to craft a personal brand in as much as so that people can actually know who you are because people do business with those they know, like, and trust? Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. And personal brand, I think, Everyone has different take on what personal brand is. You know, I think that, and I'll be guilty of it, you know, right back 20 years ago, I thought a personal brand, you know, was your logo and maybe the, the clothes that you wore and sort of your colors. But it, it's just so much more than that. It's who are you? It's how do, how do you show up? Um, oh, let me give you an example there. So, um, Facebook Live is a great way to get your brand out to the world and um, or video on social media. And Nas Daily actually on Facebook is a great example of someone that has built a, a personal brand by, by putting video content onto, onto social media. But if I, 
I was going to work with professionals, which I do, uh, professional service-based business owners um, and experts. So, so lawyers and attorneys and accountants. And I was doing Facebook Live in my pyjamas. It, it wouldn't build my credibility. So I think that there's got to be a mix of between who you are authentically and who, you, who you're trying to do business with. And there needs to be a mix. So it is okay to stand out and be different for who you are but it still has to be heard by the right people. Does that make sense? So I can. Absolutely. You know, I don't need to turn up in a suit to do business with the people that I work with, but I still need to present my way myself in a way that they can accept. And turning up in my pajamas is not going to be the thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> so that then eliminates the sweatpants crew, right? <laughs> You know, but you know, if they're doing business with other sweatpants crew people, then that's completely fine. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff. So does that now mean that people have to go shopping uh, in order to join your Black Diamond community? No. <laughs> no, not necessarily. <laughs> Great. So what happens with the Black Diamond community there? Yeah, so my Black Diamond community is, is like I said, they're people that have been doing their, their vocation for a long time. They really are experts in what they do. And now they really want to build their, their personal brand beside whatever it is that they're doing. So, um, you know, maybe they've been in, uh, in a manufacturing, but they've built their business from the ground up and they've got a real great business acumen and they want to build their speaker profile or author profile on the side of that. Uh, or maybe, like I said, accountants or attorneys or um, coaches and consultants, same thing, help them to really get known for who they are. They're the kinds of people that come and work with me and I help them extract all these years of stuff that they know and that they've forgotten and really pull it all out and get it all onto paper so that they can see, wow, this is what I do. This is my methodology. These are my frameworks. And they can teach all of this stuff that's in their head to other people to help them to um, do whatever it is that they're doing, whether it's, you know, motivating or inspiring or teaching or, or whatever it is. Absolutely. Like you say, teaching, because here in life, we're here to live, we're here to learn and we're here to contribute. And yes. a lot of people just cannot do the leaving part, let alone learning and let alone contributing. So it is so true. It is within these parameters that if you actually have clear positioning, if you actually have a clear profile, people get to know what you do and how you can absolutely help them. And that's um, what Samantha helps you to do so that you can actually extrapolate and extract all that information and expertise that's in your head um, so that you can actually help other people be, do and have either a life that's worth living or a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Now, Samantha, you would notice that, um, you know, people might be confused and that's the reason why I took you on a journey from the whole uh, traditional business to what is online and how to actually separate themselves within the online space. Now, there might have been a few questions that arose uh, throughout this journey here. Can you just let us know how people can get a hold of you? Yeah, you can reach out to me at samanthariley.global. Uh, and if you're interested in having a look at what the Black Diamond program is, then you can go to samanthariley.global forward slash Black Diamond. Super easy. Uh, absolutely. You do have something coming up with re regards to the Black Diamond. Uh, we do. We have our next authority positioning intensive. And I know that the, you might be seeing this after the fact, but we run them four times a year. But we have our next one coming up in March which um, is this month, super excited about that. And I do have a few tickets left, so please reach out if you are interested in just having a chat and seeing if it's right for you. Absolutely. Now, obviously, Samantha, you would notice that this is sort of the beginning of the year and a lot of people would have started the year wanting to create a business that's fruitful, wanting to you know, be a, a thought leader within their uh, niche or to actually really, really stand out. But if they wrote their 
um, you know, resolutions on the wall with red ink, it's probably only just about drying right now. And some people are probably getting tired of not seeing results. What sort of advice would you give to somebody who's sort of, you know, on their uh, way to being an expert within their industry, but they're not really seeing the results or they're not really seeing why they should be doing um, you know, the, the type of stuff that you teach your... your yeah, okay, your... that's a really good question. There's a couple of things there. One, I don't believe that there's a from point A to point B ever and that things will all... You do have to embrace the flow that, that you will end up going in different ways and sometimes that going those different ways will take you off on a different track and that's not a bad thing. And a lot of times we're told don't get off track, but sometimes you do need to get off track so that's so to know whether it's right or wrong you need to be checking in all the time so i have i have three year goals i have 12 month goals and then i break them down into 30 day goals and at the beginning of every month uh, and i take my clients through this we revisit you know what were the wins that you had what were the things that did go well what were the things that didn't go so well what can we learn by that you know, the things that did go well, are we going to do more of those? The things that didn't go well, are we going to do less of that? You know, what are we keeping on board and what, in, what are we letting go? So that would be my first tip is to be checking in all the time. Um, and the second thing is that building a brand can really push your limits of self-belief and confidence. And a lot of people, because you do have to put yourself out there, right, to, to get known, to make a bigger impact. So... You know, you really need to pull in um, commitment. You need to pull in um, uh, consistency and practice of putting yourself out there doing these kinds of things because you can be very challenged having, you know, being facing the world all the time, but it can, it can also give you the greatest rewards because when you see that you're making an impact and changing people's lives, then that's like the best thing ever. But when you're sitting behind your laptop and sometimes having a bad day, it's like, oh, I can't do this. I'm not feeling confident. I don't feel worthy of this. So make sure that you surround yourself with the right people that help you stay accountable to being consistent, you know, to getting out there every day and, and, and doing it. Absolutely. Um, you know, in, um, in Africa, we do have a saying that if you want to go far, you go alone, but if you want to go further, you go together. And that's the reason why if, you, if you're a thought leader um, or if you're an author, you're a speaker or you're a coach right now watching this, maybe you're a consultant or you have some sort of uh, professional service, um, you know, that you've worked in um, for, you know, a long time and you now have all this expertise that you don't know how to actually bring out so you can actually help other people and you're really ready to actually make a bigger impact i think samantha would be the um, person to go to and actually um, work with now i also would like to invite you to join her network um, that has high quality thought leaders and like-minded business owners um, that are actually there to support each other so that you can actually make a really bigger impact than you could do actually on your own. Um, Samantha, I can't thank you enough for your time, your level of expertise and your story um, that you shared with us today um, on the Online Prosperity Show. Thanks, Prosper. It's been really, really good. I, can I just add one little, uh, little tiny last thing because you can't <laughs> shut me up? <laughs> Absolutely. The reason that we do what we do is to help others. But what if we could help ourselves as well? So what if we could create a business so that we could create a life that we loved? Like how amazing would the world be if we were getting the money we wanted, the freedom we wanted, um, and creating the impact? Like that's, that's what it's all about. So I just wanted to finish off with that. Absolutely. Well, with the amount of impacts that you've just made on the show today, I bet a lot of people will be checking their income uh, to see if it's aligned with that. So thank you so much there, Samantha. Thanks, and, like you, and like you said, we are all here to be living a life of service. So if you're not serving other people, it might be difficult for you to actually have fulfillment in whatever you're doing. So that's a really good point to bring across right there, Samantha. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great.